Hello everyone, it's Matthew Stewart here, the Operations Manager at Fintelix. Alright, alright, alright. This is your main man, Will. Haven't seen you for a long time. Yeah, so what we're going to talk about today is cloud native solutions versus cloud agnostic solutions. That's going to be the topic for today, and today it is going to be this topic. Anyways, so what are some of the key benefits for both cloud native and cloud agnostic solutions? Well, let's start with cloud agnostic first, right? Um, one of the classic example of using cloud agnostic technology is using Kubernetes. You know what that is? No, I do not. Well, it's a container orchestration tool that's being used to orchestrate containers. So it, it handles the availability, skill, sk scaling the containers, health check, monitoring, and also version updates, rolling updates, et cetera, et cetera. It's originally developed and pushed out to the market by Google and later maintained by the open source community. So a lot of the cloud providers such as Amazon, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform, they all have their cloud native Kubernetes services. So, like for instance, Amazon has EKS, Elastic Kubernetes services. Azure has Microsoft Azure has AKS, Azure Kubernetes service. So, Kubernetes can actually be deployed on machines. So, you can just spin up your virtual machines and create a Kubernetes cluster that way. And you can manage the entire Kubernetes cluster from a single master node. So, if you use Kubernetes, just raw Kubernetes you can actually create platform independent microservices and applications simply by spinning up a bunch of machines, right? And then just install Kubernetes, turn them into a cluster, and bam, you can able, you're able to launch production, re production ready product. So what, what cloud agnostic means, it basically means platform independent. You're able to deploy your system onto one cloud platform, and you're able to lift and shift that into any other platform, right? Okay. So needless to say, for a lot of startups that don't know whether or not they're going to stick with one platform, having that architecture will definitely help them for future down the line if they decide to migrate out of that cloud provider. Or let's say that uh, you you know that right now you're going to only use one platform as your company grow bigger and bigger you may leverage other cloud platform services, right? So if you use Kubernetes, you're able to just deploy your service again on another cloud provider. And there are a lot of open source helper software or helper tools that are created to help you deploy Kubernetes cluster. For instance, COPS, K-O-P-S. COPS. Yeah, check that out, it's pretty cool. So that was for cloud agnostic solutions? Correct. What about uh, cloud native solutions? What are some of the benefits of cloud native? Well, the benefit of cl being cloud native is that you are able to leverage one cloud platform to the fullest. You don't have to worry about additional complexity involved when it comes down to having to have a cloud platform independent solution, like for instance, Kubernetes. Like one example is Amazon has a fully cloud managed uh, container management service and it's called Fargate. It takes care of everything from like your managing the, the actual infrastructure to rolling updates to make, make sure the pod, like the, the containers stay alive. So health check. So it's really like worry-free and also not to mention that there's additional support. Like for instance, um, if you are if you run into some issues related to your infrastructure, and if you were doing cloud agnostic approach, you would have to solve that problem on your own. Whether you go to open source, raise a ticket issue, and then you have to hope that someone from the open source community can help you out. Or uh, you have to just look into the actual source code and, and find what, what that issue is, right? But if, you, if you're using a cloud native platform, you can raise a support ticket to that cloud provider and someone professionally, professional uh, someone who, who's hired by the cloud provider, and they're all big enterprise, mm -hmm. Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, right? They're all, they all have excellent professional engineers who are top of the industry here to help you. 
But you only get that if you go with the cloud native solution? Yeah, because they won't be able to support any open source software. Like for instance, mm -hmm. like if you ask them open source software, like for instance, Jenkins, which is a CI CD tool. Uh, if you, if you ask Amazon, like support service, can you help me fix a bug in Jenkins? They will laugh at your face and tell you no. They probably won't laugh at your face, but they'll say no. Another example would be, for instance, like some of the services are very, uh, very powerful, but they're only offered by one cloud provider. Like I'll give you an example. Google's Firebase is very excellent in terms of uh, just prototyping, rapid prototyping. You don't even need a backend. You just need a front end and Firebase, boom, you have an applic application. And other cloud providers don't have that type of easy to, like, easy to use database, no SQL database service. Other cloud providers tend to have still very good no SQL cloud native services, but not as powerful when it comes down to ease of use. Like you're able to create solutions very easily with just Firebase, right? So only Google offer that service. And if you want to develop a product purely by Firebase, you kind of have to stick with Google. And that's an example of staying cloud native. Mm -hmm. Are you able to leverage one platform to, the, to its fullest extent?